Hey, Learn Audio Engineering. This is the final video in our DIY XLR microphone cable series. In the last video, we covered step two, tinning the wire and terminals for soldering. In part three, you'll learn how to solder the components together and test to make sure your cables work correctly. For links to the parts that I used in the video and more, please check out the video description. We can decide which of these two wires, the white or the blue, is the hot wire and which is the neutral. It doesn't really matter as long as we're consistent end to end. My general convention is I use the color as hot and the clear as neutral. So they need to be in this kind of configuration where the ground is on one side, the color is on the opposite side, and then the clear neutral is in the middle. What we're going to do is start by making sure we get the ground wire in the right place. And so I pushed it into that little slot and I'm going to use my third hand just to hold that wire and keep it in there. Just clamp it down while I apply solder to it. They're all seated into the connector, ready for solder to be applied and bond those two connections that we already have tinned. I'm going to start with the ground connection. I'm going to make sure it's pushed into that slot. I'm going to hold the soldering iron on the conductor until it generates some heat. And then I'm going to apply solder to the connection where the soldering iron is touching. And it's very easy to see when the solder starts flowing into the connector and flowing into the wire. They're both heated up. They are now one and the same. I'm going to do the same with the middle conductor, which is my neutral, just to add enough solder so that I have a solid connection that is flowing both onto the wire and onto the connector. And then the hot wire, or in this case, blue. And enough solder so that I can tell that it's flowed on both the connector and the wire that's attached to it. Then it's a good idea to take it out and give it a quick inspection. Make sure that there's no fibers that are sticking out, possibly making any kind of a short. Give it a yank. Make sure that everything seems tight, feels tight, and looks good. Now we're going to flip our cable over so that we can do the male end. And the easiest way to make sure you don't make any mistakes is to plug the male end into the female end and just match the colors. So in this case, my ground is towards me, my hot is on the other side, and the neutral is in the middle. And they just have to go into the same spots. Now, this is something that occasionally happens when you have a significant amount of wire in your shield, and when you twist it and put solder on it, it's actually bigger than the hole in the connector. You can very carefully just cut the tip into a little bit of a point so that it fits into the slot on the connector and allows you to push it in so you get good contact. Once we have the two ends soldered, we'll just give them a very good close inspection, make sure it all looks good, make sure that the colors line up, make sure that they're tight to the pull, and then these ends are ready for final termination. Now, in the case of Neutrik, the female end has a barrel and both ends have a strain relief. The strain reliefs are the same on male and female ends, so it doesn't matter. So we can find the female end and the strain relief has a slot in it so that it just slides over the wire. And you will see that as you put it up over the connectors, it's kind of got two little grooves that it fits in there. And it's designed so that as you tighten the connector with the nut, it squeezes on these little prongs and puts strain relief on the wire that's nowhere near the connections. So you can pull the wire, you're not going to be pulling on the connections. And then you'll see there's the spot up top. We'll just slide into the connector body, push it till it's all the way at the end, make sure that your strain relief is pushed up tight, and then slide the boot up to the connector, insert it, and screw it in until it's essentially tight. That essentially is the finished end. The other end, the male end, is exactly the same. Clamp it into the back of the jack and tighten. What I usually do is then put the two together and use that 
as a way to give them a final tighten so that they're really good and tight, lots of strain relief on the cable without any conductors getting pulled when you pull the cable. Last suggestion is that you find yourself a decent cable tester. They're not terribly expensive. I think this one was something like $50. And you can plug any type of cable into one side, a male, any type of female into the other side, quarter inches, RCAs, data cables, MIDI cables, speak on cables, Cat5, Cat6, even USB. And you will plug a male into one side, female into the other side, and then you can test. One lines up with one, go to number two, lines up with number two, three lines up with number three, nothing else works, and you don't see any other lights coming on except in line. You know your connections line up, your cable's good to go and finished. The last thing I do with my cables is I always put a cable stay on them or a cable tie. This is a, just a Velcro type of cable tie. Pick one of your ends. I usually start at the female end, put it in, pull it up tight so that the Velcro locks into itself and then it's ready to wrap on the cable. And here's a free final tip. The best way to wrap your cables so that they stay in good condition is to wrap them forward and backwards so that they, the loops take the twists out of the cable as you wrap it. So hold your hand with the cable facing your belly button. One goes on the front of your fingers, then one comes around to the back of your fingers. Front, back, front, back, and so on, and your cables take the twists out as you wrap them, and you won't have to ever worry about a cable being all gnarled when you unwrap it ready for use live or in the studio. And there's a finished Mogami Gold Studio Cable. If you like this video, please give it a like with a thumbs up and subscribe to learn audio engineering. If you'd like to get any further information about Oratone Productions, please check out oratone.biz. If you'd like more information on Legendary Rock Live or Orchestral Rock Odyssey, please check out GaryCableProject.com.